Hey, it's Chris Lemoyne with Times Two Realty Group, serving all the DFW area. I'm out here again with part two of Ask the Lender, expert advice from Kyrell Miller and Legacy Mutual Mortgage. I had some buyers that love the last video, so we're going to follow up here today. Two questions we're going to ask. Number one, the main question I've been asked again the last few weeks is, how do we help buyers increase their chances in winning when putting in offers? Kyrell. Great question, Chris. Thanks for having me again. The last our last meeting was was awesome. It was, it was great to work with you on that. Um, it's 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 a great question, honestly. Um, this kind of goes into hey, why should I use a local lender versus versus just an online lender? You know those kind of things. It's a side piece of it. So this kind of goes into detail. I'm just going to share my screen with you. Okay. Uh, kind of walk over this real quick. This okay. is something that that me and my marketing department have kind of worked up. Um, it's it's a checklist for items to do in preparation before you put the offer in, right? So this kind of goes into things that I work with you, Chris, on that I work with work with and educate the buyers on prior to putting offers in. Okay, some of these things may take some time. Some of these things may just be a simple check mark. You know, okay, have we done this? This is the behind the scenes stuff we were talking about last video. You do right? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to go one by one real quick. Okay. Uh, so first, conduct a CMA. So CMA is a comparative comparative market analysis and discuss appraisal gaps. So That's in the last one. video, wow. yeah, we yeah. have briefly discussed appraisal gaps. So it's mainly that that is mainly working, me and you working together saying, hey, where do we think this property is going to be? You know, how's it looking for, for our buyers? And Let me just say, getting? guys, he does not take no for an answer. He checks my comps, asks me for new ones like clockwork, and I don't fault him for it. It only helps buyers in the front end and in the, and in the back end. So anyway, keep going. Yeah. So the second one kind of plays into the first one as well. So the addendum to terminate, so a buyer's right to terminate in the event that the appraisal comes in low. Okay, there's there's three options, Chris. You might want to do it. I'm sure you've done a video on this in the past as far as one, two, or three, those options that they have, right? Most, most situations nowadays I'm seeing um, people are just waiving their rights to renegotiate the appraisal comes in low. That's why you've got to you got to plan for worst case scenario and really before understand what the comps are. Yeah. The offer in. Yeah. Before you put the offer in, correct. Yeah, times are not the same. Yeah. <laughs> so, but there's there's ways to protect yourself too if you don't want to take that risk of fully waiving your rights, right? Um, but it's simply just a, a check mark to say, hey, we've discussed this. We know what the plan is moving forward and we're good to go, right? Um, talk with your loan officer about the third party financing addendum, okay? Um, so if I've done once I've done my work, if up someone's front, financing, if someone yeah. is going to finance, they're not paying cash. They have to have that addendum in the contract. Correct. Right. Okay. Correct. The trick here is that there are ways to waive this fi this financing contingency, right? Oh, okay. So in the sellers, yeah, in the sellers' eyes, it's a game of what offer is highest and what offer is safest. I want my money. I don't want to have to go through and draw this thing out. Yeah. Um, so there's ways for us to be yeah. able to waive that, right? Well, that's money, yeah. So. Long story short, we do that by by simply doing what's called a pre-underwrite. We just have an underwriter look at the file, and they have they give us an, an approval prior to putting the offer in. So now somebody's actually approved for a certain loan amount instead of being pre-approved. Okay. So there's that contingency difference there that's important to the sellers, right? right? It just seems safer. That's all it is. So your closing date. Um, has your lender given you a close date? Legacy mutual short close dates allow us to stay competitive when making offers. Can you rush an appraisal? So in most situations, we can rush an appraisal, and that helps if depending on where the property is located too. But it's important to know that we do not specifically pick the appraiser. We have what's called a panel. So yes, long story short, we can rush it if need be, as long as the buyer knows that what, what cost is. And sometimes I can help out there depending on the situation, right? Well, yeah, um, we, we have a, a property right now in Itasca out in the middle of nowhere. And you pretty much, you got that thing scheduled pretty fast. I was pretty impressed about that. <laughs> so it's doable. It's yes, doable, guys. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as far as closing, how fast can your lender close? Those are just very important questions to help strengthen your offer. Yeah. Right. It's just something good 20, to have in your back pocket. 21... 30, 45, does it fluctuate, you know, you know, based on the market? Right. So if you do your work up front, if you get pre-underwritten up front, 
the chances of you closing faster or having the ability to close faster is much, much better. The buyer's got to get their stuff into you, all right. of it, W-2s, right. tax statements, everything. If right. they get all that into you fast enough, then you can speed the process up on your end. Yes, buyers yeah. and right. an agent should allow at least one week for that pre written process to, to kind of have to, to run its course and get that approval back. Sometimes it's sooner, sometimes it's later. It's good to know. But yes, if I were to give if I were to give a date for pretty much anyone, I would say I would say thirty days. But if if we do our work up front, then yeah. it could be twenty one days close. All right. Okay. okay. It could be fourteen. Just depends. Right. Okay. Um, a letter to the heart. I've seen a lot of these recently. I think you know uh, most everyone is doing this for the houses that you love. Write a letter introducing you to the sellers. Right. It does help. Okay. Every little bit helps. Um, if it helps by 1%, why not do it? You know, it takes 10, 15 minutes. It's kind of fun, you know? Yeah. Um, get your loan officer to call the listing agent. Listing That's agents want to hear that everything's okay, right? They want to hear, hey, somebody's actually viewed the buyers. They, they, they verified documentation. They know what's going on. And the lender will be able to take their calls if they have any questions in the future. That's big for me because I'm calling sitting. you at what, seven, eight o'clock. We've written offers dang near midnight and you were available yeah. to make that call if the, if the listing agent was available. That is huge. And that's what I appreciate you for. So thank you for that one. Well, it's also because my wife likes you. That's, that's ah, really okay. Good. All right. Good deal. <laughs> um, yeah. So our next one is just proof of funds. So this is just just this is just the next piece. A lot of these tie into each other, right? So if we go through the yeah, that's, that's process, what the listing agent wants to know. Yeah, yeah, just those kind of things. So proof of funds. These are just check boxes here. Total cost analysis. This is just simply a presentation that I work up. Ooh. Sometimes I do share this with the listing agent, saying, "Hey, here's proof that I've educated the buyers on what, on the worst case scenario, if the appraisal does does come in low, or saying, hey, you know, it's going to be better off for them financially to put five percent down instead of ten percent." Because most is, that, is yeah. that a buyer approval first before you do that? Does the buyer have to give you the thumbs up before you can give that much detail about their file, or is there? Yeah, a so it's it's really only um, it's it's generalized, right? So there's no buyer information yeah. in there whatsoever. It's That's only saying, hey, here's what their monthly payment and cash to close looks like with 10, 20, or 20, 15, and 10 percent down, for example. There's no buyer information in there whatsoever. It's just me saying, hey, I've shown this to the buyer. They understand this. Here's what this looks like. And we're good to go. Oh, right. this it's is just for the buyer house. side. Okay. I'll no, this is, this, is a, this is a presentation that I'll send to the listing agent sometimes. Okay. And, okay. Hey, here's what I've done to help educate the buyer on oh, the okay. scenario. Gotcha. It's yeah. oh, Everybody gets it. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The more information, the better. Increased earnest and option money, right? This is something now, that we've done this. common. Yeah. Would you say... Earnest now in most contracts, and I've told my clients this: earnest money is always higher than option, right? Earnest money typically is about one percent of the sales price. Option money is about 001 percent of the sales price. I and you correct me if I'm wrong. In today's market, I'm taking that option money and I'm going up. And I mean, especially if someone's financing, because the option money is the money that they particularly are going to lose. So yeah. if they can prove that they're willing to take that risk, especially if I do my job and we can make sure that, that the home is, is, is as good as it's going to get. If we're confident, the inspection is going to go well. It is a huge risk, yeah. but since you, if we got clients that can't waive the financing addendum, would you say that's a good strategy? It's risky, but would you say it's a good strategy depending on the oh, buyer? Yeah. So every client can, can be pre underwritten, right? For one, if I give a pre-approval out, I'm I'm 100% certain it's not a it's not an if I've had 99% of my pre approvals get out have gone through one percent 99% yes guys 99% that's yes. big overall our company is 97% okay the pre approvals don't fall through You're unless company somebody withholds information from me yeah yeah, yeah. okay um, but yeah I mean so with with the option money you know that's 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 telling the seller that the buyers are bought in. But I got to check with you going to make nowhere. sure I've got to check with you to make sure that's doable. If I'm going to increase any one of those amounts. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just okay. for us to work together, which we're, which we're good yeah. at. We're you know? yep. It's good to have a good team. Right. Um, and then re reduce the time, the time frame for option period. 
Now, this is something that I, that I leave up to you. You're great at doing this. Yep. I say, hey, what do you need from me? What what can I help you with? But this is this is something that you're that you're great at. It's just it's just right. just one more checkbox um, to help strengthen somebody's check offer. Strengthen the offer. Yep. Guaranteed cash offers. We had mentioned this a bit in our last Zoom in our last Zoom meeting, right? This is discussing ribbon. Okay. Right. Converting. Um, your, like just a review. Converting someone who is a who's taking out a loan to purchase a home, if that's their only option, converting them into a cash buyer, guys, using ribbon. Anyway, Kyra. Has to be a primary home though. That's the only caveat. No. Okay. Loan amount has to be between one and a million dollars. If, if you cross off those two, and within okay. some areas, there's a pretty large area that we can do this with. I haven't I haven't come across that as a barrier yet. Okay. Yeah, so if you're, if the best loan for you is, is VA, is USDA, is FHA, we can still convert your offer to a cash offer. So you can still get that loan that's best for you financially. That's what it is. So then the full, the fully underwritten file, that's I actually kind of jumped the gun. I mentioned this first off, but that's the pre-underwritten, that's the pre-underwritten process. Okay. The pre-underwritten process does not cost a dime. There's no obligation to it. It's only me doing a bit a bit of extra work to help strengthen your offer. That's all it is. Okay. All right. Yeah. Good deal. Yeah. Well, Kyrell, I got one more question and I want to use this to kind of keep it simple because I want to use this to delve in our next video. Interest rates. Everyone's freaking out about interest rates. Like they're going up, they're going, everybody thinks they're going up. But actually from your end, you're watching it every day and you're seeing it not go up every single day. We actually had a dip, I think a week or two ago, right? So can you just briefly Tell us what happens if the interest rate is just super high. What does a client do? Keep it simple. We're going to use this for part three of the next video. What you got? Yeah, yeah I'll stay pretty general here um, because we could dive in and, and discuss the three minute call right. on just interest rates, right? So the first thing I'm going to say is, look, I, I work with financial advisors all the time. Okay, so they worked up a chart for me. I'm, I'm going to get this to share with to share with you and our, you know, our just our, our viewers here. Um, but for, for an investor in the past 30 years, if they miss the five best days in those 30 years, their, their overall appreciation in earnings like was half or was at least you know, below half of what it could be if they did, did actually, if they were in the market for those five days, right? The same concept can be applied to homes. If you wait till next year, you can. This could be the best year. It's just about getting into the market, sure. not necessarily. And you're letting your clients know you're not just selling to help them buy or sell a home or buy a home and then hey, buy and never talk to you again. You're right. calling them during these days and saying, "Hey, let me tell you what's going on." Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So it's you know, don't try and be too picky as far as hey, you know, I'm, I'm going to try and time the market, wait till the rates come down because there's a lot of other factors that could be could offset you trying to wait till the interest rates come back down, right? During COVID, it was a crazy time. Usually, interest rates are better when the when the economy is great. Right. You, know, you, got any data? you have any data to share on that? Yeah. Just to let people see what it used to be and what it is now. So and here's a historical that. chart of wow. 30-year fixed rate, right, for mortgages. So at least we're not back in 1981 or two, oh, right? Yes. Yeah, that's so really this kind of puts it into a better perspective. Now, this was a crazy time. This was mid-COVID right here, this okay. small range right here, right? right? That's the lowest, so we've ever, it's like almost the lowest we've ever been. During, like right no, yeah, that, that actually was, wow. yes. So this was whenever the, the government was purchasing a lot of mortgage-backed securities. So they were dumping a lot of money into this, and now they've kind of pulled back, and we can see the reflection of that, right, as of currently, right? But so where we are now, it's pretty similar to like back in 2018, 2017, okay? So we do expect at some point in the next two or three years, probably one or two years, for the race to, creep, to keep creeping up a little bit, right? We're but I'm, I'm, I'm assuming, norm. yeah. We're still yeah. way below the norm here. Yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah, so what's what do you mean by a high interest rate? Is it by the by the individual's own I think it's perspective, overall. it's perspective and monthly yeah. payment and all that stuff, right? Yeah. So this is just one piece of it, right? But is right. it is it more important for you to get into the to get a home for yourself or to try and time the market? You know, what are you gonna what's what's your goal? What's your timeline? Are you gonna rent and be tossing away a bunch of money while you could get into a home? You know, this just those kind of things. Maybe throwing away money. So it depends on your circumstances, right? right. right. And it depends right. on if you find that house you really like. 
in, yeah. the, in the area you need based on your situation, kids, schools, whatever it may be. Yeah. Well, cool, man. Thank you for your time. I know it's brief. Let's go ahead and hit this on uh, part three is going to be all about interest rates, you guys. So stick around. Stay tuned. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Chris, the awesome. Times Two Realty Group, Cairo Miller, Legacy Mutual Mortgage. We'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for having me, Chris.